Hello and welcome to Premier League predictions here on Live Score. Now, as you'll notice, Sam Tai is once again absent. This time, a little sniffle has kept him out of the hot seat, and he's asked for the main man, James Lorenzo, to step in again. So, welcome back, Any James. Excuse. Thank you very much for having me, boys. Well, considering you've scored 14 yeah. points in two attempts on that chair, I can see where he's coming from, and I think it's because Sam is running scared. Now, in week five, Sam had an eight-point gap on Dean and an 11-point gap on me in first place. I can reveal that after week nine, the gap to Dean is just two points, and I'm three points behind that. It is slowly catching up, so I can understand now why he's looked to the master to, to come back in and, and set up, the record. Stitch him up. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping you're going to stitch him up. And go for that. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely see. right. Let's get this underway. Uh, Leicester play Arsenal in the early game on Saturday. James? Your guest of honour, you get the first dibs. Yeah, it's tight, isn't it, uh, at the top, uh, where neither of these teams are, but uh, in, our, in our league it is anyway. Um, Leicester are getting better game by game, um, and I like, I like them uh, in this one. Uh, Arsenal still haven't done enough for me, so I'm going Leicester win, and I'm sure Sam will have gone the same. OK, Dick? I think it's a bit harsh. I mean, Arsenal haven't lost a game since 28th of August when they lost 5-0 to Man City. Some game to lose, though. And... The way they played against Aston Villa, it felt to me like Arteta's vision had finally come to life and this team realised what he wanted from them. They've been pretty good, so I'm finding it hard to bet against Arsenal right now. I'm not quite brave enough to go for them to win. I'm going to say draw. OK. Um, I'm going to go for them to win. I'm oh, going to complete the set. That's why you're going to complete the set. It is one bottom of the league, but it also <laughs> makes this competition interesting. It does, when yeah. we get one of these, everyone's happy, everyone's excited. You won't catch Sam, though. Watching that 12 Oh, no, I might not. do. I might do. Right, let's go. Burnley, Brentford. And Dean, you can start us off here. Burnley v Brentford. Um, I haven't backed Brentford many times this season, but I'm going to back them here. Um, definitely in a way win. OK. James? Yeah, I'm going the same. Brentford for me. I think that the fact that David Raya is out of this game is going to be a massive blow. Why? Burnley, Burnley barely have any shots. Well, this is it. But I still think that he has been a, a big fixture. I'm going for a draw. I'm going to go for a draw nil, here. Nil-nil. Nil-nil draw. This is going to be one of those games, I think. So we'll see. We'll see. Liverpool versus Brighton. Perhaps slightly easier to call. James? Yeah, Liverpool here. The only reason I wouldn't go Liverpool is uh, to annoy Sam, but um, <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing else. You go for the Brighton win, then? Yeah. <laughs> Please yeah. do it. Please do it. Do you? Um, yeah, look, I, I mean, it's going to take something ridiculous to stop Liverpool at the moment. Uh, 19 games unbeaten, most Salah's on fire. You've got to go with Liverpool. I think there's a point we're getting to in this league, and we've got now Liverpool, then the Man City game, then the Chelsea game, where it's quite hard to back against any of them at this point, unless they're playing each other. The only person that's going to do that is probably you. No, <laughs> even, even I'm not stupid enough, I think, to back across the top yeah. three at this point. So that's a, a clean sweep for Liverpool. I think we might have one here too. Manchester City against Crystal Palace. James? Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect from Palace at, being, at the beginning of the season. I think they've looked pretty decent, and I yeah. do like them, but it's Man City. so It's hard, it's though. Win. Like I can see Palace going there and getting a draw, mm. like the way that things have been going for them. I'm not going to back it, but it wouldn't surprise me if I get this one wrong. I'm going to go Man City, though, to be safe. Man City have just lost in the Carabao Cup for the first time in five years. You so can Sam United. No, I think that this could be a pummeling. I think that they might be so angry mm. about that result that they might just snap here on, on Palace. Mm -hmm. Um, I look, I, I, I've also been impressed with Palace. I think they've been much better than they've a lot of people me, gave yeah. them credit for, um, Dean, mostly. But it, was, <laughs> it is one of those where it's Man City, you've just got to go with it, uh, which takes us on to Newcastle-Chelsea. I mean, there's nothing to see here, unless you just want to see Newcastle get pummeled. It's a Chelsea win, mate. There's no, there's no way they're not winning this game. Yeah, th there'll be a nice flag display. The flags are back in the Gallagher, um, and you know the, the the mood is slightly better yeah. around Newcastle. But you know the new owner bounce didn't really happen against Spurs. It's not going to happen here. Chelsea are going to win this. Yeah, I mean last week obviously Newcastle went to Palace, got got a point, and that was all right. No, no, no nothing to be ashamed of there. But um, it does feel like this one is might not be seven nil, but I don't think this will four. be seven nil. Uh, Watford, Southampton, James. Uh, draw. <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea. But also, um, yeah, I can't tell these two teams apart at the moment. I don't think I've seen enough of them. I'm going to sit on the fence and go draw. Yeah, look, Watford's first game, they lost 4 or 5-0 to Liverpool. 5-0. Next game, they beat Everton 5-2. The 
this is going to be five all. <laughs> I go and draw. <laughs> OK. Um, it's, it's a proper weird one, isn't it? Like, which Watford are going to turn up? Mm. The Watford that turn up for the fast, last 20 minutes uh, against Everton or the Watford that sleep walk their way to a 5 nil loss against Liverpool? I'm going Saints, you know. Emmanuel Dennis is out. He's committed the most fouls. Uh, in the Premier League this season, and I think that would be quite key to, to stopping them. James Ward Prowse is back. Well, look on one fa- on one flank, Watford have it's Malisar, who's the most fouled player in the Premier League, and on the other flank, they have Emmanuel Dennis, who's the most fouling player in the Premier League, and that's the balance that really has been keeping them going. I think without logic. one of them, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Without one of them, I'm going for Southampton to win this. So, Spurs, Man United, <laughs> Dings. Um, yeah, is this going to be nil nil or is this going to be three three? I don't know. Um, Either way, <laughs> El Sakiko is being uh, labelled. Uh, both managers under massive pressure. Solskjaer has to win, and when that's the case, it usually does. I'm going Man United to edge it. Okay, James. I'm going to go draw um, again. I can't tell these two teams apart. Uh, I, don't, I just don't know what I'm going to get from Spurs from week to week. Largely, it's underwhelming uh, attacking play um, and. Uh, United can't be in a great place after last week, can they? I don't. Th- I don't see Solskjaer putting the rockets up them and then bouncing back mm-hmm. this weekend with a you know a definitive performance. So I'm going to sit on the fence and go draw. I think this sadly could be the end of Oli, and I'm going to go with a Spurs win. I think this might be it. I think that given Spurs's kind of weird ability to spring into life for seconds at a time, we saw that in the first goal in the Carabao Cup midweek. And they can just pull out those moments of magic. Now, I know United have been capable of doing them as well, but just think with the mood around the camp at the moment and the way that it seems to be quite divided in the dressing room, Spurs might just have the edge here. So I'm going to go with that and the crowd and the crowd getting on Man United's mm. back. I think this could be, could be the one. Which takes us to Norwich versus Leeds. James? Uh, Norwich are just bereft, aren't they? Um, Leeds aren't much better, but I think I see Leeds edging this. I, I I'm not sure Norwich will ever win. Again, in their history. At this <laughs> rate. In the until, Premier League. Until they, until they, until they win, I can't back them to exactly, draw. Exactly, yeah. They, right. need to, they need to show me that it's happened before because on current evidence, it doesn't look like it ever has. So uh, I'm going Leeds for this one. Dave. Yeah, look, Norwich, they really need to win this because Leeds are the team in 17th right now, that first spot outside the relegation positions, which is basically what Norwich are aiming for this season. That's the best they can possibly hope for. And if Leeds beat them then they're opening up that gap and it'll be, well, Norwich are set on two points right now and Leeds are on seven already. So they start to get away from them if they don't win this and I think Leeds will go there and win. Yeah, I mean, the return of Bamford, Rafinha coming back in, Joe Gellhart starting to emerge. There seems to be a bit of an attacking threat about Leeds, even if the defensive issues are still there. I think they've probably got enough to make that worst goal difference, joint worst goal difference in Premier League history um, and and sort it out again and make that a problem Mm. for Norwich. Aston Villa versus West Ham, the battle of the claret and blue. Dean? Uh, West Ham are the best team in Europe at the moment, so how can you bet against them? Um, Genuinely, like they are on a roll. And Aston Villa, (coughs) I'm not sure what's happened there. I'm going West Ham. James? Yeah, I'm also going West Ham. I'm I'm very much enjoying this spell as as it goes all right, as, as long as it goes, some, at some point it's going to catch up with West Ham, Thursday, Sunday, every week. It's just... Not yet, know, though. Not yet. So uh, this is what I mean. Why did we can current exactly. form. <laughs> until, until the wheels come off and someone's hamstrings, Mikel Antonio's probably give up, um, then, yeah, I'm, I'm riding the West Ham wave. OK, I'm going to go with a draw. Uh, just because I think Leon Bailey coming back for Villa might be massive. And I think that switch, which we saw at half-time against Arsenal, where they abandoned the five at the back, it just hasn't been working. We appreciate that it gets Watkins and Ings in together. It gets Buendia into a position you'd kind of want him in. But ultimately, it hasn't paid off. I think we go back to a 4-3-3 at Aston Villa this weekend, and that's what we see. So I'm going to suggest that might just about scrape them a point. It's like it's a big risk this week, mate. I'm taking some risks. I've got to take some risks. I'm still five points off the lead. You know, you've got to take a couple of risks here and there. And it leaves us with Wolves Everton on Monday night. Dean? I genuinely have absolutely no idea what we're getting here. Um, But I'm going to go for Wolves just as a hunch. James? Uh, yeah, in the same way I don't see Man United bouncing back from a disappointing weekend, I do see Rafa Benitez uh, producing something from, yeah. from, from, from Everton. Um, so I'm going to go Everton. You're going again, Everton. I'm, not, I'm not really sure. It's a yeah. bit of a hunch. Okay. It's a lot of a hunch. I'm going to join you on I'm going to join you on Wolves. I think, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I think that there's just a better feel-good factor around the camp. Still some massive misses in that Everton camp. And ultimately what we saw at the end of last week was... One of the worst collapses I've ever seen. First time Rafa Benitez has ever conceded five goals. 
um, as a manager. And I don't think he'll stand for it. That's why I think there'll be some kind of reaction. Well, if he continues to play Solomon Rond on our front, I don't think there's going to be much reaction at all. So you know the Wolves are rubbish on Mondays, though? The Wolves are rubbish on Mondays. They've only won one in ten on Mondays. Yeah, hate playing on Mondays. Wolves are literally the boomtown rats. They don't <laughs> like Mondays. On that bombshell, I think we will leave it there. Thank you for watching Premier League predictions here on Live Score. We'll be back next week where Dean thinks he'll be top of the league.